Hello. Hey, well, hello. How's it going? Good. How are you? Doing well. Welcome you. to the show. I was just saying just before we came into this segment that you and I, we actually know each other pretty well. I mean, AWS is such a massive organization. So there's so many different people. You meet new people all the time. But Ajane, we, we have a history. Since I started at AWS, we've been working together on solutions. That's right. That's, That's right. Awesome. And by the way, Todd is a great guy to know. He's funny sometimes, but he's also pretty talented. <laughs> yes, yeah, sometimes I'm funny. I don't know about the talented part, but uh, hey, so why don't you introduce yourself and then, uh, yeah, we can start talking about our topic today. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Ajay Swami. I've been with AWS for four years. Um, I lead product for AWS solutions, specifically focused on generative AI and AIML. And today we'll be talking about one of my very favorite solutions is called Generative AI Application Builder. I'm going to talk to you through a little bit about the solution, what the solution does, its value prop, and then we'll do a quick demo. And then if you have time for questions, I don't know if you have time for questions, Todd, but we'll definitely go through the demo. Oh, oh, we're, oh, we're, oh, we're going to ask questions as yeah. they come in. Go ahead, Gigi. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, there's always time for questions. There's no bad questions unless they're from Todd. And <laughs> we want to have your questions in the chat because we can ask them real time. Use this opportunity to pick both of these AWS solutions professionals' brains about generally AWS solutions, but also this generative AI opportunity that I think I'm excited to learn more about. You guys already kind of know both about it. Um, so before we get going, can you give us a breakdown? Where did AWS solutions come from? I know they've been around for a, a while because I remember them from mm -hmm. over the years and they've, they've changed, they've taken different directions on how we offer them. Where are we now? Where did we come from? What is it? Yeah, so, so, so AWS Solutions started before my time, but the genesis of it was that solution architects in the field, they saw common problems and common patterns that customers were facing. So we thought, hey, look, instead of having to go to each individual customer and have to solve that from scratch, let's put together, stitch together services, not so services, solutions, that can actually solve a very specific business or technical problem. And then we took that and we sort of productized it and we put it in the solutions library. So now customers can go there directly, they can deploy them through self-service, and then they can be up and running in a matter of minutes to solve for very unique business cases and also horizontal technology use cases. Yeah, Ajay, it has been a while uh, around for a while. And I know that too, because I've actually used solutions before I was at AWS. I was a software developer. I consulted, I worked with companies and uh, I I use the AWS Solutions Library because my thinking was, I want to know how AWS does it. If the experts at AWS are saying, this is how you should solve for this, then I'm going to listen. One of those areas was IoT. I uh, wanted to learn IoT, but I didn't know a lot of IoT. So I went to the Solutions Library. There were a few solutions in there. One um, was instrumental in helping me learn just the basic building blocks of how IoT services came together to build out. Once I got some familiarity with that customers started asking me more i started getting the expertise and in, internally in my head and then all of a sudden we were winning iot workloads and, and and it was fundamentally based on that solution so huge value just in learning aws but also these are production ready things right people can deploy them into their account and use them as it absolutely and, and look i think it would be a miss if i didn't say that these are well architected it's built by aws experts architects software developer engineers it's open source it's secure, it comes with an implementation guide, comes with demo videos, and again, let me just say one more time, it's secure and it's open source, right? So you could literally go to GitHub and then you could take that as a building block or an accelerator and start to customize it for your own needs. Or maybe you don't have to, and we'll go through all of that today. Yeah, that's right. We want to make it easy. We want to make it faster. We want to make uh, it just like fat, you know, easier to get out into uh, your use case and deploy it. You don't have to start from scratch and reinvent the wheels. You can start with a solution, extend it. Um, Ajay, I was going to ask about today's solution specifically. So this is one of the solutions that you'll find in the solutions library. Can you talk a little bit about which one we're going to see today? Yeah. So today we're going to talk about uh, Jerry AI Application Builder, right? What this is, it's an AWS solution that allows you to very quickly put together a RAG architecture, which is a retrieval augmented generation architecture, which is where you can connect to a data source and query that data source in natural language. And you can do that very quickly without having to code, number one. And number two, you can deploy it 
into your production environment. It's in already tested, it's already secure. And again, you can do all of that without having to you know, worry about what the underlying code is, what the integration is. And it does that through using Langchain and AWS Lambda underneath. And look, if you want to take and if you want to dive deep, you can do that also on your own. But we do that for you. That's nice. I uh, I appreciate the fact that, you know, we've thought about how we can make this well architected, but also make it simple enough that it performs, comp- complicated enough that it performs, simple enough to start using right away. We do have about 10 minutes left of yeah. time with you. So let's dive in. Let's see the demo. And can you tell us more about it while you walk us through? Well, actually, while Ajay's uh, bringing that the, his screen up, I will. I want to ask the audience: Have you heard of the AWS Solutions Library? Have you used the solution? Is there a favorite solution? Um, yeah, be checking out right now. Ask a question. We know a lot about some of the other solutions in there too, so it doesn't have to be generative AI application builder. But that's the one we're going to show. Um, Ajay, you got your screen ready to roll? Yep, it is sharing. There we go. All right, okay. fantastic. So, folks, this is this is the generative AI application builder landing page. So here you have the overview of the solution. It tells you about the benefits. There are all of the great technical details. It gives you the architecture diagram. You have the implementation guide here. And even though it's open source, by the way, I have to tell you that you know we do. We, there is a cost here, which is the cost for using the AWS services underneath. However, the code and the logic and the UI that we've built, that's all open source, right? So, now, what you can do is very quickly, you can just click on launch in AWS console, and that's going to bring you to um, your cloud formation form. And you can quickly go through the cloud formation form, set up all of the details. There's the S3 URL here with your cloud formation template. You can click next. I'm not going to go through all of this, but very quickly, you can enter a stack name, you can provide your user email. And once you set that up, and click next and you hit verify, what this will do in the background is it's going to set up all of the infrastructure and the services to get this application ready and running for you. And then you'll get an email in your account with your username and password, and you'll be able to log on to a deployment dashboard. Um, and I'll, we'll go through the deployment dashboard in a second. Any questions so far, Todd or Gigi? Yeah, I think my... Yeah, I, I just want to call out... <laughs> oh, We're both. oh, wait, 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 wait. But I my mission now and me and auto oops here go ahead Gigi. Yeah, i think i think your studio is cutting in and out of on us um i was gonna ask so you spin these up right like yep. you said you will get charged for everything that is spun up because it is a resource there are some free tiers always with aws with certain resources but you will get charged and it looks like you guys have actually already put that into documentation which is super helpful yep. when you spin them up you can still see those resources and interact with them within a, any AWS service as if you had spun it up yourself, even though it was done through CloudFormation, or are they like locked away in a bubble somewhere? No, no, this is all very transparent. You could do that through billing. You could actually go to the AWS console. You could go to that specific service and see, see what's happening underneath, right? Yes. You have yeah. full control and full transparency underneath. Nothing is hidden. Got it. So I think that's it's really... Okay because this could be a base for something that you build that's on. exactly right that's exactly right yeah yeah the extensibility so this is a, just a recap so we went to the solutions landing page to find all the details about the solution and how to implement it how to customize it and then we launched directly with a single click in it if you're already logged into your aws account it launched up cloud formation now there's some parameters that you can configure right certain solutions if you've already got existing services that you want to integrate into say a vpc already deployed you want this launched into your vpc we, we can enable that on some of the solutions but once you hit run on that thing and it's done you get the you get some outputs what are those outputs yeah so once so once you sort of get all of once you get that email with the login information and the unique url you are brought to this page right this this is sort of the overall interface for the generative AI application builder and what you can see here is that this is the landing page where it allows you to deploy a new use case. When we say new use case, what I'm really saying here is it allows you to deploy a new generative AI application into your production account. So let's actually walk through that. I think it'll be really helpful, right? Um, so I'm going to click on deploy a new use case. And right now we have text. In the future, we'll have you know some multimodal use cases coming up. Uh, for now, you know, I'm going to give it a quick 
name. I'm going to say, you know, financial analysis. Not. Excuse my spelling there. Um, and then we'll just give it an email address and a description. And then, yes, I also want to deploy a UI for the use case. I'm going to click on next. And then for this, I'm not going to use a VPC because I don't have a VPC set up, but let's, let's go past that. But you can see you know, how there's options for you to set up what you want to, right? Uh, but it's not controlled in any way. Yeah, I just want to clarify something as we walk through this. Yeah. So, so you're walking through a configuration in a dashboard. So the CloudFormation template launched this dashboard. So this dashboard is running on AWS services. And the purpose of the dashboard is so that you can launch different use cases for different things. Say you wanted to do a RAG implementation for financial analysis, but, but later you wanted to do a RAG based on some other index of data. You can segment those two different use cases. So this is really a management application. And then that previous screen, you said, I want to deploy a UI. Uh, I imagine you're going to get to that UI, but there's such a concept that deploying it without a UI. And why would you do that? So you could deploy it without a UI, in which case you'll have access to APIs, and you could build your own UI on top. So that's the beauty of it. You can Got use it. your existing UI, or you could customize the UI based on your branding and your own sort of assets. So this solution includes those APIs already developed for you. That's correct. That's correct. Nice. Nice. So, so very quickly, right? So here you can pick, you can pick your model provider either through Bedrock or SageMaker. With SageMaker, you can bring your own LLMs. You can bring the best and the greatest from Hugging Face, for example. Or you can just go to Bedrock, which is all managed for you. And you can pick a model. We have all of the latest models here uh, that are available on Bedrock. So here I'm just going to pick Claw3 Sonnet. And we'll leave this as on demand, right? Like we're just doing a demo here. But if you really want like high provision, you have a lot of users coming in and using this application, you can always go for provision. Um, advanced temperature in terms of like how, in terms of, you know, tuning the accuracy, et cetera, you can, all, you can always set those up. You can also enable guardrails. Guardrails are really useful for you to filter out harmful content, uh, you know, mascot PII information, all of that great stuff, right? Um, so I'm, I'm not going to do any of that right now. I'm just going to click on next. Um, and here, this is the beauty, right? This, this is the value prop here. This is retrieval augmented generation. Definitely want to enable that. So I'm going to click on yes. And you have two ways. The first is through Amazon Kendra, where you can actually upload documents. You can index those and you can query those documents. The other one is Bedrock Knowledge Base. So there you can actually go to the Bedrock console and create a knowledge base. So if I go to Bedrock here very quickly, Right, I can go to knowledge basis. And here you can see that a house knowledge base is already created. So if I just click on that. And, was that is... and with the cloud formation or those are separate? So, you so this, is, separate. this is separate. So you'll have to go through Bedrock Console. And again, this is all in the implementation there, right? It'll tell you exactly how to do that. And okay. it's very it's very easy. It's like point and click. Um, it's very um um, it's easy for you to actually crawl a website and index that website, right? You can also upload documents, a lot of great things. But but once you do that, I've, I've already configured some of the data sources here. So I'm going to click, I'm going to copy that knowledge base ID. And all I have to do is come back here and just populate that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to leave the rest of the stuff as is, but you can actually tweak the temperature. You can actually tweak the relevancy and all that great stuff. You can also filter by metadata if you wanted to. So, for example, if you wanted to, if you if you had five different kinds of documents and one was around music, the other one was around financial statements, you could actually add metadata to that and actually filter based on that, which is very useful as well. And you can click on next. And here you can customize your prompt in terms of the prompt link, your actual prompt to it, and also in terms of what your history should be because... This application also allows you to maintain a history of the previous conversation. And you want to maintain how many of those multi turn conversations you want to maintain that goes back. So when you say something like, oh, Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. And then you ask another question that says, how bad was Humpty Dumpty's fall? It knows how to refer back to the original context. And I could go back 20 conversations to the past. And then you click on next. You have a confirmation and then you deploy a use case. So. I'm not going to do that right now, but I'm going to go back to that main deployment dashboard. 
And I'm going to show you, for example, one of the ones that I've already deployed. So I'm going to click on this very simple thing called chat data sources. You can see it's already been created here. And by the way, it also comes with this CloudWatch dashboard, right? So you can actually look at everything in terms of performance. So I'm going to go back here. And give me one second. So while you're pulling this up, I just want to recap some things, right? So you, you, this, this dashboard was deployed into your account, and then you used it to configure how you want to launch a generative AI text uh, use case. Right. We, and we've talked about generative AI on the show before, so we're going to actually augment any uh, data retrieval through the LLM with this index uh, once we've indexed our, our data. Uh, and so now that's going to go off and deploy that use case into your AWS account. And so now we can pull up that UI you were talking about earlier. That's right? exactly right. And when you see this link here, open application, by the way, Todd, that's, this is a great point that you just made. This is actually deployed in your AWS account. This is actually a usable production ready application. So, so now this rag implementation, by the way, I've uploaded some financial statements from Amazon. So I could just say, what were Amazon's revenues for you too? And hopefully, I should give me available information. What's that? I said this is publicly available information that that's, we've that's, 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 that's exactly right. Uh, and there it is. There you go. Right. How and you can you can actually get deeper, right? You can ask some really deep questions that can say, hey, out of this revenue, what did AWS generate? Or like what did Prime generate? So if it's public, if it's in that document, you'll be able to query that information. And also, I'm not gonna show this right now. You can upload multiple financial statements and actually compare those across companies. So it's really powerful stuff. Yeah. It's very cool, Ajay. So we've got like just a minute left. I want to make sure we touch on the key aspects of what we showed here. Um, and by the way, folks, if you're familiar, I, I believe Langchain is the technology behind this scene. So if you're curious on how to uh, orchestrate LLMs and, and knowledge uh, bases and indexes using Langchain, this is a good solution to do that with. But Ajay, anything else we want uh, our, our audience to know before we sign off here? No, I, I would say go go to the landing page, deploy the application, play around with it. And look, we have a very rich future roadmap coming up with multimodal use cases where you'll be able to do image analysis, image generation. And I'll tell you what, Todd, like one of my customers is a news organization, right? And they have different creative departments and they have multiple instances of this application deployed. One for editorial, one for sports, one for comics. So you can see how it can be useful for different news analysts to actually use this for their own use cases. Yeah, Ajay, you said something that I think is really important. Uh, these solutions are actively maintained. You are making enhancements regularly to these things and listening to customer feedback, uh, working backwards from the customer as we do here at AWS. And we're actually improving these solutions uh, with an engineering team in house here. So you're gonna get more value downstream and not having to write the code. So that's a that's a really cool thing. We have a fully dedicated engineering team. We have full-time PMs. We have full-time designers. We have full-time DevOps. But we actually look after this. It's an end-to-end -end product life, life cycle management.